What's up guys, Riley here from RP Productions and today I'm doing a review on this 2015 Corvette Stingray, the 2LT with the ZF1 appearance package. So I've always wanted to get my hands on one of these new C7s and today I finally have the opportunity to and lucky for me it's in this brilliant color called Daytona Sunset Orange. Now there was only about 1400 um, Corvette coupes made in this color and uh, I, well, actually Corvettes in general made in this color now it's discontinued color um, and it looks absolutely gorgeous out here in the sun I don't know if you can really pick it up on camera but there's just a ton of flake in the paint and it, it looks absolutely beautiful so it's one of those colors that will actually change color depending on the lighting you know back here in the, in the dark it looks like a you know a darker orange uh, and then in the sunlight you know it really pops but really nice looking car I mean super clean uh, the owner has kept it for now totally bone stock so that'll be cool to get a uh, you know a baseline um, kind of run with it and then if later on he decides to do something with it then of course we'll post some videos up of it later but um, should be a really fun review now the ZF1 package is basically kind of an appearance package and then it also has some stuff uh, done on the interior but as far as performance wise pretty much just like a bone stock C7 not really any uh, no fancy brake upgrades or exhaust so it's going to be kind of a, a bone stock Corvette. We're going to see how it compares. Also might have a little clip of uh, comparing it to my own personal Dodge Charger Scat Pack. But for now, let's go ahead and hop in the car and uh, take, a take a look uh, around and see how it drives. All right, guys. So now inside the Corvette, let's go ahead and start her up, take it for a spin. So keyless start, put your foot on the brake, press start, and away we go. All right, guys, so right off the bat, setting off in the new C7 Corvette. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of obvious. I think you would, everybody would expect this, but obviously you're really low to the ground. I mean, you're sitting practically on the road, and it's a weird feeling. Um, I don't think I've ever driven a car that is this low. So go ahead and take her out on the road and uh, go have some fun. Like I said, first impressions, obviously, you know, very low to the ground, but also really, you know, a kind of crammed interior, but it's what you'd expect. You know, this is a pure sports car. It's, I think this is probably the first pure sports car two-seater I've ever reviewed on the channel. I don't think I've ever done a, a video in a car that does not have any type of back seat. There's some that have, you know, pretty much back seats that are useless, but I believe this is the first one without a back seat. So this is a, a pure, proper sports car. And this, you know, American made, this is just gonna be a totally awesome experience and uh, this car is coming way too fast so yeah aside from the interior you know being pretty small there's also you know pretty big blind spots looking out you know kind of your blind spot area but as far as you know forward visibility also pretty small about what you would expect very similar to the uh, the new Camaros that I reviewed uh, this you know obviously resembles a lot of the Camaro because they kind of share a lot of the same parts and um, kind of just very similar really um, this is just the Camaro's big brother and this is the one you want to buy if you really want to go have some fun um, not saying the Camaro is not fun but this is you know the pure sports car and the Camaro is you know the muscle car so like the Camaro the Corvettes do have this little mode selector right here where I can go through and uh, select you know touring or let's see touring sport or track mode so there's all these different modes that will change you know uh, different parameters within the car and also it will change the gauge cluster um, so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll go through those a little bit later but I think for the review I'll probably keep it in uh, sport mode I think that seems like a like a good one and uh, I'm very interested to figure out uh, how much power this thing actually has all right so coming up here on some of my favorite little corners to take uh, should be a nice little you know uh, demonstration of how the handling capabilities are so we'll take it easy at first and uh, obviously very minimal body roll I mean the car only weighs I believe somewhere between 33 and 3400 pounds kind of depends on how you have them optioned out uh, got quite a bit of stuff in the, the back kind of sliding around but as far as you know the driver feel really planted to the ground very easy to drive it corners just like you'd expect one of this is probably one of the best if not the best cornering car I've ever driven. It'd probably be between this and the BMW um, M235i. Those are both very good handling cars. Um, you know, I'm very, very impressed with this car just by just spending a very minimal amount of time in it. Um, very comfortable to just kind of drive. I can see, I see why a lot of people actually daily drive these. I mean, I would have no problem daily driving this aside from getting used to the visibility, which would probably take a little bit of getting used to. But really, it's not that bad and uh, really enjoyable car. 
So let's go ahead and turn onto this back road and see how she does. So with this car, we're dealing with 455 horsepower and you definitely feel all 455 of those. It definitely is enough to kick you in the ass. Um, it sure does get up and go and the power just continues to build all the way through the RPM band, which I absolutely love. Uh, it never dies off. You feel the power pretty much everywhere, just like you'd expect in a car like this. Um, <laughs> it's definitely quick. Um, wow. So in the rear, we got some 285 sticky Michelin Pilot Super Sports, I believe, which also help out a lot putting that power to the ground. So really didn't have much issues with traction. It got a little bit squirrely on me, but as far as putting the power to the ground, that's really nice to actually be able to, you know, put your foot down and hook. Um, a lot of cars out there, for example, my car, if I put the, my foot down, I just spin. So it's really nice to get in a car that, you know, it's, it's more, I guess, balanced. And if you floor it, it does exactly what you want. That's really nice. So to complement the nice handling abilities with this car, you are seated in these super nice leather seats that really hold you in. Uh, I'm just not moving around at all in them. You know, some people, some larger people would probably find it really crammed. They probably find the entire car crammed, quite honestly. But for you know being a relatively skinny guy, I really enjoy these seats. You know, they they hold me in nice and snug. They're really comfortable. You could do really long road trips in this car, and you know, be totally fine. Um, it really has everything you want. You know, it's a, it's a true daily drivable sports car um, that still has, you know, nice luxurious interior features, nothing over the top, but you know, for the money that you pay for these cars, they start about $55,000. The way this one's optioned out, the sticker price is a give or take about $68,000. Now, if you were to buy one of these cars for $55,000, I really don't see what on the market can really compete in, in terms of, you know, performance and just bang for your buck. These really are a great deal and that's why so many people buy them. And it also the market for these, you know, generally you think about, you know, older men going through their midlife crisis and they won't have to buy a brand new Corvette. Uh, and that's true, but you know, old men are generally wise people and they buy these cars for a reason because they know they are great cars and Corvette is definitely a special brand. All right guys, so what would a proper review be without a zero to 60 test? So let's go ahead and test the zero to 60 on this bad boy. seconds but it definitely feels a lot quicker than that I think you know if I really sat here and perfected it I could I could perfect the launch um, you really don't have to modulate the throttle that much when you're really you know going from a dig um, a lot of cars that you you know you drive nowadays you have to really you know be easy on them at, at first and then they hook and then you floor it and this car it really does a good job so you know I'm actually gonna go ahead and do it again and this time we're just gonna floor it wide open throttle we're gonna see if it hooks it should hook so let's go ahead and find out So 4.4 that time, definitely getting better. I guarantee you I could sit here all afternoon, still have a smile on my face doing it every every time. And I guarantee you I could sit here and probably knock that thing down really close to a four flat. I'm assuming with cool, colder weather, um, you know, do a burnout, heat the tires up, then go. You probably might be able to squeeze a three nine out of it. But uh, you know, a car that runs close to a four flat mid fours uh, on a bad day, I mean, it's a, I don't know, like a hundred degrees outside right now. Um, you know, that's about, that's really good. That's about what you'd expect for a car like this. Um, and you know, it really is. It's a ton of fun driving this car. And uh, this is really enjoyable. Um, having this roof up here with that's exposed, it's like a, 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 like a tinted glass roof. So you can just uh, cruise around and look at the sky. And then also it's removable so you can take it off. Um, you know, that's a super cool. And I think a lot of car manufacturers are probably gonna start copying that. Um, you know, it's just, that's so cool that you don't have any type of, nothing's really above you. And it, it's just, it's really enjoyable to drive this car. Everything's driver, driver oriented, driver focused, the passenger, um, you know, Vehicle Virgins recently did a video talking about the drive. The passenger doesn't get like anything, and he's very much so right. The passenger just kind of sits there, and the driver has all the buttons and all the control. 
So now I guess a couple things I haven't touched on yet. Uh, the gauge cluster, it's very nice to look at. It's still kind of weird for me because it is basically all digital. You do have the normal analog speedometer and stuff off to the side, but you don't really pay attention to them. The main focus, you know, you have your tachometer, your speed, um, you know, it's it's all digital. So it's very, it's weird for me having just, you know, uh, basically a computer screen tell me where my RPMs are and stuff. So I guess it's kind of where the future's headed nowadays, but uh, it's kind of unusual for me. So that's kind of interesting. Heads up display, obviously that's super cool to have. Uh, I really enjoy looking at that. It makes, it makes driving a lot easier. You know, you don't have to look down, up, down, up. You can just cruise, you're like, oh cool, I'm, I'm, you know, there's my speed, there's my RPMs, everything's all good. So really nice layout. Like I've, I said earlier, it's really driver focused and they just make it, you know, this is my car, I'm gonna have a lot of fun in this car and that's all. Plenty of storage back there. I was very surprised to figure out how much room is in the back of these things. You know, the driver may not have a ton of room to, you know, do his daily activities, but in the back, you have tons of room. You can put all kinds of stuff back there. Go across country, and uh, I've seen people put like roof racks on these things. I mean, really, it's just it, the possibilities are endless, but it's a really comfortable car to just cruise around in. Really enjoyable. And, you know, like I keep saying over and over again, it totally makes sense now why so many people buy these. Another point in a vehicle that I love to critique is the steering wheel. And GM definitely nailed it with this steering wheel. Really nice grips up here at 10 and 2. Bottom's not flat bottom, but that doesn't bother me. Um, nicely leather wrapped, it has, gives good driver feedback. The steering on this car, absolutely flawless. And you know, there's a, basically a mode for everything. Currently I'm in sport, so it takes some effort. Uh, earlier I was in eco mode and I could just basically throw the wheel and it would just keep spinning. So you kind of have two different extremes and then sport mode's kind of a happy medium. Um, you know, they really nailed it with uh, just making this you know, a very enjoyable driving setup. So now on a completely total opposite side note that a lot of people don't really care about, but some do, the fuel economy on these things is actually not that bad. I don't know how the owner drives this car, but looking here at his average fuel economy, and he's got 20.2. So that's pretty damn good uh, as far as, you know, I'm concerned. I'm used to driving a car that gets pretty shitty gas mileage. So 20 miles per gallon in a car with this much horsepower and, you know, a sports car, like, yeah, I'll take it. So how about that power again? Let's go ahead, we'll do a pull from 30 miles per hour. <laughs> I really don't have any other words to say other than this, than this car, is, it's damn fast and it's a lot of fun and I want one. Well guys, I wanna thank y'all for watching this quick little review of the new Corvette C7 Stingray. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I definitely did. They're a lot of fun. Um, you know, if you ever have the chance to drive one, one of your friends has one, you wanna go for a ride in one, guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. It's, it's truly is, it's a really nice balanced car, but still, you know, more power than most people would really ever want or need. Um, it's, it kind of blows my mind how some people get these cars, um, you know, I guess minimal experience or something, and they're able to drive them, um, you know, perfectly. I mean, aside from the car being low to the ground, you have to having to worry about curbs and stuff like that. But it's really easy to drive, and that's kind of what makes these things so great. It, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this. It's not like some fancy Ferrari with an eight-step process of how to put your car in drive. It's just like, all right, just like a normal car, and go have fun. So, really enjoyable car. Thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy.